Every once in a while a culturally important movie gets made and often they come out of nowhere or they're underestimated, undervalued or even hated and despised by those that stand against the values they espouse. And this is what we have with Sound of Freedom. This movie is unfathomably important to our society because, and this seems to be something that we've forgotten in this era of narcissistic, self-centered, self-obsessed, self-aggrandizing, self-absorbed, self-promoting, self-loving madness, that society is for the children. We exist in a society to have, raise and protect our children into adulthood when they then continue the pattern and have their own children. As men, our most important job is to be the defenders of our families, our communities. It is our job to stand in the line of fire and be that bulwark, that first line of defense that the dangers of life smash up against as we traverse the fine line of survival. And for the most part, those dangers will come and then recede. And we'll recover, strengthen ourselves and prepare for the next time danger comes knocking at our door. A mother's role in this is just as important, because while men will stand and fight, mothers are the final shield, the last line of defense. They'll put their own body in between danger and their children, even if it means they're severely hurt or even killed. And of course, there's the family unit, grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts. This is society, and it is all geared towards raising children. And that is how things have always been, and how they should always be. Sadly, there have always been people that want to do unimaginable evil and cruel things to our children. So to that end, they will try to trick us, fool us, and cheat us, and do whatever it takes to gain access to those that need our protection the most. This movie highlights those monsters in their various guises and points the finger so that we can all see what is happening. But this isn't a brutal revenge movie akin to Taken, which I also have a visceral reaction to since there is no length I won't go to to protect my own family. And Brian Mills is what we would all aspire to be in those situations. I told you I would find you. No, this is by the book a professional doing his job, a job that he has devoted his life to and who is supported unconditionally by his own family because there is no doubt, no room for questioning, no argument to be made against it. They know there is no greater calling. He is doing one of the most important jobs in the world and he is doing it the right way or at least the legal way. At the start of this movie, there are some real live CCTV clips of what are the most harrowing and terrifying scenes that I can imagine. It is scenes showing children being stolen and it hits like a sledgehammer. The movie is a true story about a man named Tim Ballard who has been tracking and jailing child exploiters when one day a new recruit tells him that he doesn't think he can do this job for long because it's too heartbreaking and soul destroying. He asks Tim how many bad guys has he caught and Tim says between 250 and 300 and then the guy asks him how many children has he rescued and Tim stops and realizes that if children are still being exploited and hurt then just putting the abusers away isn't enough. He needs to save the children too. And it is from this revelation that the movie begins. I won't go into details because this movie is worth watching. And if you haven't seen it already, then go and watch it. It really is an important message for all of us. The movie hinges around the kidnapping of a brother and sister, which are the catalysts behind Tim Ballard's crusade, because he wants to make a difference to at least one child. He wants to know that if only this once, he didn't give up. He didn't decide that there was nothing more he could do. He kept pushing until he achieved that one thing. It was essentially the line between hope and despair. And if he didn't succeed, despair would win and it would destroy him. Jim Caviezel is very good as Tim Ballard. He really gets the emotion of the situation across. In fact, there are no bad performances. The children in the movie also do a very good job of bringing their characters pain and anguish to the screen. Now, there are all sorts of nonsense news stories going around about how much of the story is true and how much is embellished. And I want to address this by saying, who fucking cares? It doesn't damned well matter because there are children suffering daily, every minute of every hour. Who gives a shit if this or that isn't quite exactly how it happened? 
All of the events about what is happening to children are real and happening all the time, and we need to make sure that whenever we have a chance to make a difference, no matter how small, we make the right choice. We put those that need our protection the most first. Because otherwise, nothing we do in the world means anything. There are a lot of abusers out there, and not all of them are even doing things that are technically illegal. Some of them are aided and abetted by the state, and it is these that are the most pernicious because they hide in plain sight. Just the knowledge that this is happening all over the world, and in numbers that are simply horrifying and unimaginable, should be a wake-up call to us all, and that we need to take a long, hard look at what and who we are allowing to exist within our societies. Incidentally, Netflix refused this movie on the grounds that they didn't like the content, but still thought Cuties was just fine. Very interesting. I wonder why that is. This has been Movie Suck, feeling incandescent with rage that a movie like this needed to be made, but very glad that it was. Signing out, leave a like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the flip side.